All right, welcome. Good to see all of you tonight. There's a strong commonality running through tonight's meeting uh, in terms of the participants who are here. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guess what that is, but let's pray and come before the Lord. And uh, our prayer tonight is is that um, that our that our faith is not is not done in isolation, but it is practice in the context of community. That whether we meditate, pray, um, I guess serving is almost always <laughs> with others, but. Uh, regardless of what it is, that it, it participates and adds to the life of the church and to the uh, life in the world. Let's pray together. Father, we pray tonight that you will shape us so that our faith is not done in isolation or some sort of segregation. And, and I, I, I mean like it, that it's not personal, that it's not private. Um, and that it is not practiced just in the mere four walls of the church with other Christians. That our prayer and our reading of the scripture and prayer, intercessory prayer and, and ministry will have its um, limits outside of the church. That you will use us to be salt and light in the world. Teach us, God, then tonight how to be, uh, how to bear with one another how to proclaim your word and how to have true authority that comes through uh, your son, Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. My cursor is disappearing again. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello again. Um, we're going we're gonna to finish this tonight and, and maybe we'll cut it short and, and just finish, wrap this up. And I have a feeling we're going to have to do dedicate two more weeks um, to this to finish off next chapter. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll see. Anyway, tonight we'll we'll be discussing um, we'll be finishing up different uh, the ministry. Let's let's see if I can get the title right. Uh, ministry, yeah, just call it ministry. Oops. Um, and we talked about the ministry of holding the tongue. The ministry of meekness, that's power under control, and the ministry of listening. Uh, I don't know if you find this difficult. I This is something that um, I had to learn to do and um, something I, I, I still practice honing because my mind wonders. When I see a blue car, I'm like, blue car. So, yeah, and the ministry of helpfulness. And tonight, we are coming to the ministry of bearing and um it might sound a little bit strange to those of you what, what does this mean to bear with one another and really I, as i shared with you on sunday i thought i shared this with you last monday but as i shared with you on sunday minister the ministry of bearing is to um, be patient with one another and the scripture explicitly commands us to do this and um, it's interesting that paul says this in galatian because Galatians are, how should I say it, dissenting with Paul. They don't accept Paul as an apostle. They have abandoned Paul, and they are thrashing Paul, although he is their spiritual father, and, and he's the one who founded the church in Galatia. Um, yet when Paul is talking to them, he's not just talking as a, as a pastor to nice people like, you know, but he is talking to people who are um, rather very hurtful and um, illogical. I don't know if that bothers you when you notice that people are irrational, they're nonsensical, um, but he is dealing with them and he is bearing with them. He has given all of himself to them yet they have abandoned him. But he bears with them and he encourages them to bear with one another as he is bearing with them. And because now I, all, all the ministries that we do, 
goes right back to the grace of Jesus Christ. Christ bare with Paul when he was the chief of sinners and the persecutor of sinners. It's no small task that church has now somehow accepted Paul, who, who executed and persecuted and executed some of his members. Um, but just as he was accepted by Christ, um, he is asking, he is accepting Galatians and asking Galatians to accept one another and bear with one another. And uh, Mac asked a good question last week, you know, how far is too far? Um, yeah, there is, you know, you, you really have to know uh, when, yeah, how to, how to live this out in real life. Because Jesus doesn't just say, um, you know, Paul, yeah, keep persecuting, keep persecuting. But he comes in his dream and says, Paul, why are you persecuting me? So there is confrontation that needs to happen uh, at some point. So can't get into that here, obviously, but you, you really got to talk this out with somebody or pray this through, think this through in terms of how you can bear with one another. Now, let me just stop for a second. I have a feeling we touched part of this last week. Am I right? I feel like I didn't, but now that I'm talking about it, I feel like I did. No, okay. So my mind is playing tricks on me. Okay, continue. It is the fellowship of the cross to experience the burden of the other. If one does not experience it, the fellowship he belongs is not Christian. This is um oh okay. This this is um this is a very harsh kind of statement from Bonifer, and that uh it is the fellowship of the cross to experience the burden of the other. So if your church life, Christian life, or yeah, you know, community life, community of faith life, and your Christian life outside of the church, if you don't bear anybody's burden and you're in isolation um, and you have, I don't talk, you do you, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do me and, and let's not get tangled too much. Because I know that if I step into your world and you step into mine, we're going to have a, 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 a ball of a mess. But unfortunately, that's what we ought to do. Get into the thicket of things and bear with one another as we develop relationship with people. Not easier said than done, of course. But we can do this because um, we have fellowship with Christ. And unless we experience part of this discomfort, uh, the fellowship that you belong to is not Christian. And that's the harsh part. And um, I would have to agree. And, and wouldn't you? I, I think you would agree as well with Bon Effort that if, if, there, if your life is just one smooth mountain, smooth, straight road, and you don't experience any kind of burden from anyone else, that your fellowship is not Christian. You can comment, you can disagree, um, <laughs> you can ask questions uh, as I go along. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on the chat, so please feel free to post anything as we go along. So we're continuing on with the Ministry of Bearing uh, for the next few slides. And um, as I mentioned on Sunday, bearing the freedom of the others, there are two types of bearing that we need to practice. So one is that we bear the freedom of the others. And second is we bear the sin of others. So um, the latter, the bearing the sin of the others is more difficult because they're actually sinning against you. Um, but the first one, bearing the freedom of the others is very common between different personalities, between different choices that people make, different things that people say. Um, these things can rub you the wrong way, but you must bear with that. And um, again, there comes a point where you need to confront a person, but you must do it out of, uh, in a Christ-like way. And you need to determine that. What is, what is Christ-like way in which I approach this person, not to not out of anger, not merely to correct and curb their behavior, but I sincerely love you. And if I don't tell you this, then it wouldn't be love. 
from that mindset we approach, right? Um, so that's the freedom portion and bearing with the sin of the other is, is when somebody sins against you. And all of these things are possible because uh, Christ has, he, he, he carried us and carried our sins on the cross. And I'm, we ought to be sensitive to that. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'm expanding here, but, um, Walk with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing with one another in love. That is a Christ like way of bearing with others in their freedom, in the way that they may, in the way that they're made, in the way that they interact and see the world. We must bear with them. Sometimes, yeah, anyway. Okay. He who is bearing others know that he himself is being born. And only in this strength can he go on bearing. I, I'm just going to go forward. All right. Um, any questions about the ministry of bearing? What part of ministry of bearing do you find difficult? Or what type of um, burden is you feel is challenging? Bearing other sins, both. Um, what kind of freedom? I, maybe I should make it specific. What kind of freedom do you have difficulty in bearing? Freedom of the other. So for me, it might be um, when I find um, integrity issues where I know that the person's lying. I, I find that very difficult to bear. Yeah, I, yeah, so you, you might have something. I don't know if you want to share what that might be. Um, yeah, stubbornness can be one sometimes if people are stubborn. Nothing, nothing. Okay, I'm going to move on then. So all of the all of these um, ministries that we discussed so far, ah, Linda. Okay, well, for me, answers to some. But, uh, ah, I see, I see. So you hold a tongue. You know what, though, honestly, um, that is probably the first and the most important ministry as we bear with other people. Um, I find that Bonifer usually says things in sequence, in connection. They're not just random things. But bearing with one another is definitely holding the tongue. And one day you might say something. But you're right. You're right. We shouldn't jump the gun. We shouldn't jump the gun. Okay. So all the things that ministries that we discussed so far, especially the first one, holding the tongue, um, is either negative or positive behavior or absence or yeah apps negative I, I don't mean like bad but negative as in like absence of a behavior like holding the tongue uh, ministry of helpfulness of course is something that is um very visible and, and, and is, is a behavior that people can observe um so a lot of that is just sort of behavioral um kind of ministry um, but then there is the last ministry, well, second last ministry is the ministry of proclaiming, proclaiming the gospel, uh, proclaiming the word. And I think I grew up thinking, I always grew up thinking this is like, um, street evangelism or able to debate people on the street, um, having all the right answers or a lot of the uh, enough answers that I have ammunitions in my pocket or in my gun, a theological gun that I can just pew, pew, pew. But um, Bonhoeffer teaches us uh, a little bit, well, quite differently. So we are thinking of that unique situation in which one person bears witness in human wars to another person. Be speaking the whole consolation of God, the admonition, the kindness, the severity of God, 
the speaking of that word is beset with infinite perils. Uh, if it is not accompanied by worthy listening, how can it really be the right word for uh, for the other person? So already we're seeing that holding the tongue, ministry of holding the tongue and listening is part of this proclamation. So one cannot be, uh, I am just going to jump into ministry of proclamation, but one has to practice the other as well. It, it's, it's sort of like um, a fruit, uh, as I sometimes say. Uh, if you have an orange, you can't take out the color orange or juiciness. You, you gotta have, you gotta bring them all together. So ministry is kind of like that. You can't pick and choose the one that you like. You unfortunately you have to eventually proclaim. Eventually, all the listening and holding of the tongue and bearing has to come to um, maybe one of the last ministry that is to actually articulate the things that has been fermenting and maturing and growing and budding inside of you. Um, does, does that make sense? Let me know if that does, does or not. So, yeah, so um, if it is not accompanied by a worthy listing, how can it really be the right word for the other person and um who was this was it john knox but somebody i feel like somebody john and it's not me one said that you cannot speak to someone un unless uh god has i'm paraphrasing terribly here but unless it is it is the word of god for that person so it's not your advice it's not what you experience or what you think that person should do. But this really filters out a lot of words, doesn't it? That, you know, am I certain that this is what the Lord is really putting up on my heart? And how do we know all that? I don't know. <laughs> when you get there, you you, you do kind of know. So the ministry of pro, uh, proclamation or proclaiming. Uh, sin in the community. The word is not spoken at all. Yeah. If there's a sin in the community, and uh, the sin in the community is that the word is not spoken at all. Um, I don't know why there's a period there, but yeah, that we we somehow just got used to bearing or ignoring or isolating that we don't actually say what needs to be said. And um, it, it is so, so, it, this is most, I think this might be the trickiest uh, ministry because we can see something that we can we can look at something and clearly see that it is wrong and we want to say it but yet god's timing and his wording is so different from ours that you you say yeah what you want to say is really is what needs to be said but the lord says something god says it's something else in a slant or something really out of what I think is what needs to be said. And that is the word that the person needs to hear. So this ministry takes some skills <laughs> and, and, and a lot of patience and prayer. Where Christians live together, uh, the time must inevitably come when in some crisis, one person will have to declare God's word and, and, will, and will to another. It is inconceivable that the thing that are of utmost importance to each other should not be spoken by one one to another. So uh, next next chapter is confession, where we, you know, I confess my sin to someone, but this is the word of God that you speak to someone. So there, there there's a communication that um, Bonifer finds very important in the church, but the humble person will stick both to truth. And love, not just truth. He will stick to the word of God and let it lead him to his brother. Let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you think it is love is paramount to the truth? Why do they need to be married? Why do they need to be conjoined in the ministry of proclamation? Why do you think we must speak in truth and love? Why can't we just speak truth? 
Or why can't we just lean more towards love? Why do they have to be truth and love? Okay, they're not mutually exclusive. It embodies Christ. Yeah, truth and anger is a, it's a very bad combo. Yeah, because sometimes we lean towards love so much that it's actually half truth and love. Okay, half truth and, and and love. Usually, I what I mean by that is, sort of you feel bad or you don't hurt the other fe person's feeling. Um, yeah, it has to come from love for others. Slash, his word is to love others. Okay, it has to come from love simply because um, your motivation is not to crush. I guess right. Easy to do truth and anger, though. Yeah, it, it is absolutely true. Um, truth without love, only hurtful. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with all the statements. Truth, anger, and love. Oh, the triadic combo. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, th I think, <laughs> I think it, 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 it can be done. Um, because love also knows anger, but a holy anger. Truth leads to judgment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't read that. Read the last comment. I don't think it shows up in the um, recording anyway. So I, I think um, truth and love is important because only truth and love leads us back to the cross. And this is a ministry of the cross. All ministry is, essentially. The truth is that the cross points to the um, severity and, and, and the gravity of, of sin. And, and cross also points to the love of God who punishes sin, but at his own cost. So it's when when you and I proclaim the word of God, they one of the things that must be seared into our heart is do they see christ do they see will they see jesus on the cross through my speaking to them will they, will will this action will these words lead them to the lord or um something else right or you just feel ah oh, you just feel good you know oh, so refreshing <laughs> I finally said the truth, but um, truth and love always leads to the cross. That that's what I think. Anyway, final. What time is it? P. Oh, thirty-one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the ministry of authority. I I I I was really tempted to skip this, but. I think this is really important for in the context of parenting, especially, and in the context of uh, some sort of ministry, you know, church leadership of some sort. Because we find that in in the, in the church, uh, especially uh, Asian Korean, you know, church, there is natural hierarchy and authority, and that gets determined by the office. The title that you hold like you're a pastor elder deacon or ministry team leader that brings authority and, and and just that title alone says i put my time and energy into this place and and i have power over you i'm not saying everyone's like that but that's sort of it, it's in our culture and also uh what is in our culture is um respecting the elder you try to get authority through um, seniority. But genuine authority, spiritual authority, is to be found only where the ministry of hearing, helping, bearing, and pro proclaiming uh, is carried out. And that is the true authority because you're pointing people to the cross. That it is Christ who has the final say in how this church operates, how Christians think and treat each other and live their life with one another. That is the true power, true authority, not lording it over people, 
not thinking that you have some sort of that people owe their time to you and that they must obey you not so now we're all here to obey christ and christ alone so i pray that i think this is the last slide oh yes yeah i pray that we will minister in such way and that we will receive the authority under heaven and earth that Christ promised through these things. That by living our life in Christ, that we receive true authority from God. Okay? I, I, I pray that Bridgeway will not, I mean, will not be a, a political church. And we're not. We're far from it. But I pray that we will just keep going that way and, and humbly serve each other getting into each other's um, presencing each other meeting people and, and getting to know anyway so the question is but how how do we do these ministries um i think practically speaking they're all uh concrete and, and, and simple enough to do in terms of grasping the concept but it is the day alone i, I mentioned it, I, i'm pretty sure i mentioned this last week but go back to the chapter on the day alone and, and that is to spend moment in silence read be silent again and, and, and pray and, and intercede for people meditate pray and intercede because that will lead you to ministry if if you yeah whatever your whatever you're reading that word will when done right will turn it, it will become a ministry. Um, it is not to bolster your courage for the day. Um, although it does do that, I, but these are secondary blessings or benefits, right? The true benefit is that we receive authority of Christ, that we may be salt and light in the world, um, that they may also see Christ. So let's say... Uh, Uh, I'm trying to think of something. Um, okay, let's let's just keep using this verse. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, then the ministry of holding the tongue. How does that work in that place? As I intercede for my brothers and sister, may you. So I'm praying, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm like, okay, I, I, I need Christ to be my shepherd. God, I, I pray that you will lead my life rather than be led by money. Okay. And I pray that um, everyone here at Life Devo and, and, and Bridgeway Church will will find you or or that they'll be found by you. That's a that's a biblical way of saying it. That that they will be discovered by you and they will be led by you. You will lead them to still waters and, and, and you light them, you know, you lead them to the green pastures. I pray that they'll find contentment and peace. And then you you, you have a, like such a wonderful, wonderful meditation and prayer and intercessory prayer, and you go to church. People come to late, people come late to church, they're talking during service. This doesn't look like a still quiet, quiet water or like a green meadows. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now you need to minister the real ministry, the thing that you've been meditating and praying. Now it has to be uh, find the real place where you can become a minister. So first thing might be holding the tongue. Second might be helping people along or listening to, you know, why people can't uh, have Christ as their shepherd. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to keep talking about it, but so it, it it comes to a point where you have that relationship with people that your prayer that you pray for them becomes your ministry, that you become uh, a shepherd's helper and a minister in the world. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Any questions about all the ministries that we discussed? Um, is that progressive or all at the same time? He doesn't mention that it is progressive, and I don't think it has to be progressive, but I think there's a wisdom in making it progressive. Um, so one time, I don't know if I shared this before, but you know, Mian said to me once, 
just because you, what you what you know to be truth for the other person um that it, it should not be communicated or, or yeah, let me just I'm, I'm botching it up because the truth that you truth which is it could be absolutely the true what you're saying but that truth can destroy the the, the listener the hearer so ministry of proclaiming where you um even good things like encouraging i, I i'm i'm cautious with that i i i hold my tongue even when i feel like i need to encourage somebody i know it's strange but I, i've seen negative fruit of that like like personally um so yeah i i think there's a wisdom in, in being progressive i'm sorry that that took but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay, moving on. Uh, you know, I feel like we should just stop. Yeah, why well, hold, um, okay, I, I, I'll i be honest with you. One is, um, sometimes I, I feel like I'm saying it. Um, to just, how should I say this? Okay, I'm. I think I'm saying it because um, I feel like it needs to be said. And, and there's a. I noticed that before I, I'm about to say it, I noticed that there's a hint hint of the glory that comes back to me. Um, that I'm saying this for you, but it's also for me. And that makes me stop. And I wonder, am I saying this as in a, in a form of manipulation? to spur someone through uh, good feelings so that they will keep working or that I, I fear that they might get discouraged and stop working or something. So I I caught myself with that. Um, so even in, even for encouragement, I, I'm very cautious because I know that there's sin in me. And I'm also cautious. This is second reason. The first reason is that there is sin in me that I notice. And the second reason is because I hold my tongue for encouragement is because I know that the person, the other person will take it the wrong way. And it's not a negative emotion. It's a positive emotion that the person will experience. And it, it's, it adds to their identity as a useful person asked to their identity as oh i um i'm good at this this is who i am and i want more of this in this community yeah and it, it could be superficial too of course um so in that case i i try to find other ways of saying it um and usually, and uh, yeah, usually ends up me asking questions like, "How was it?" Um, and then, I, and depending on the answer, more questions will follow. Yeah, yeah, parents would know. Parents would know absolutely that um, praise is not necessarily a good thing. And, and the educators are catching up. I heard, you know, um, that when people are doing good work because they want praise rather than the enjoyment of the work. Um, oh, little Johnny, that's a, that's a very, very nice picture. That's a very good picture. You're so good at drawing. And these, it seems so harmless, but you know, maybe, but it can harm people that when they stop hearing those things, they wanna stop drawing. So it, it's better to maybe ask like, what are you drawing? Why did you choose to draw that? Um, you know, I, you know, something like that. I don't know. I, I read that somewhere. I was told that I don't praise enough. Ah, everyone's different. Everyone's different. Yeah, everyone's different. And um, we we have to discern our way through. Okay. Oh, it's seven forty-two. All that yapping on my part <laughs> carried us through seven forty-two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the discipline of a uh, spiritual discipline of silence, right? Okay, um, this is the last chapter. Life together, 
confession and communion. And, and this is something that um, it is shocking that even confession, like you are confessing your sin and we can corrupt that as well, either by making it a um, habit, empty routine, or reveal, look how holy I am. <laughs> Who will save us, guys? Who will save us? Anyway, so this is spiritual discipline of confession. And um, yeah, you know what? Rather than going into it, let's just jump into it next week. And um, I think, yeah, I don't know if there's a week that we need to skip, but I don't think so. I, I think I figured everything out. Um, so next week, we'll finish this up. I have a feeling we'll probably end up dedicating two weeks for this. So, um, yeah, please join if you if, you know, if you can. So, any last questions or thoughts? Okay. Is there a ministry that you feel um, drawn to? or you feel most apprehensive about? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one for sure. All of them, you want all of them. Yeah. All of them difficult, and you want all of them. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. One at a time. One at a time. And dabble a little bit in the others, for sure. Yes, but praise God that it's all, it's all based in grace. So he's patient with us. He's... Yeah, so that's why we're patient again with others. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for your patience. Thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for holding your tongue. Thank you for being so helpful that your Holy Spirit does not barge into our soul and, and just uh, let us have it at all times and, and just reveal how terrible and pathetic we are that we can't even do one ministry well. I pray that um, as we minister, that we will find you and, and your grace even more, that our strength, our motivation, and what we gain is you and you alone and your grace. So God, I pray that um, our pride will not get in the way and our ego will not get in the way of really seeing and, and knowing you. Thank you for this time with my sisters and one brother. And I pray that you also bless those who join us later um, during the week as they watch this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.